Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So, um, today I'm going to talk about Thomas Webb, Old English Bullseye Pattern. Um, it looks a bit like, well it does look like this because this is it. You can see with these nobles. And um, yeah, it's a pattern that started in 1903. All the glass I'm going to show you is um, pre-war. And uh, yeah, so they did vases and bowls. I don't really have any of those anymore. I sold them off. Um, um, but I'm going to show you the tableware I've got. Um, and it came in different colours. There's like, um, sort of like uranium yellow, uranium green, dark green, I think purple, um, brown and clear. Those are the colours I think I've seen. Um, and yeah, there's no proper catalogues for this. Um, the first book I'm going to look at is terrible, you'd think it'd be great. It's this one, which is actually um, the story of, Tom, of Thomas Webber's son's gla glass mask makers. It's a terrible book. This is, this is not going to encourage collectors, but um, I'll show you what it says in here first. Before, um, But I've got several references I'm going to show you so you can see um, what kind of things there are and um, what the books say. So with that said, um, let's go on. I'll show you the books and then I will show you the glass I've got. I nearly forgot that I wanted to tell you about the origin of this name. So where this name, Old English Bullseye, comes from is that in old leaded glass, where you see the little panes, and you'll see some of them have a blob in the middle. Now. When they used to make that glass, there were two ways of making it, and I'm only going to tell you one of them. And one of those was to get a blob of glass on the end of a, of a, of a rod, yeah, and then spin, spin the molten glass, and it would stretch out into a huge pancake, and it would cool down and solidify as that huge pancake. Um, to make the pancake even bigger, what they would do is they would cut a trench um, next to the guy that would be doing the spinning, and he would have a really big blob and then he could spin it harder and make it even bigger and it, and the and the disc would then actually disappear into the ground it would be so big that's how they made bigger panes of glass so anyway one of those panes when they cut it into little squares would have the blob from where it was attached to the pontal rod and in those panes of glass those were called bullseyes and um yeah and hence it's an old glass manufacturing technique, old English glass manufacturing technique, and it has some bullseye in it. And yeah, these bullseyes look like this. Um, but in actual fact, they have a broken pontle in the middle of them, but they do look a bit like that. So that's where that name comes from. So now we'll show the references. So the first book I'm showing you is Art, Feet and Mystery, The Story of Thomas Webb and Sons Glassmakers by H.W. Woodward and um, yeah it's not a very thick volume and this is what it has to say um, yeah and this is why it's not great because this is a glass that you see everywhere and it talks about the gay glass um, 19, from the 1930s and then it tells you about the different colours delicate shade of green sunshine, gold and amber evergreen revival, oh, green, yeah these are actually not all the colours, but yeah. Um, and these are plain Venetian ripple, old English bullseye. Um, and some cut with a um, lady design. It doesn't tell you when any of these... One, it doesn't give you any pictures of any of these. It doesn't tell you when any of them started as a pattern. Um, yeah, so these patterns that they're talking about, the Venetian ripple and old English bullseye... Um, yeah, we're around earlier, and um, yeah, it's just no pictures. So this is what it is, and it doesn't tell you that that um, when they stopped either. And, and it does. Go, this stuff was made post-war as well. So um, anyway, with that said, I will um, move on and show you some more better book references. The book I'm looking at here is British Glass. 1800 to 1914 by Charles Hadjimach and um, yeah so this is what we're looking at so here it's called ball mold or old English in the um, Thomas Webb book it's called old English bullseye 
So, yeah, the name Progress, and I'm sticking with the old English bullseye. Um, so there we go with um, this book. Um, I won't show any more from this book. I'll move on. So the book I'm looking at here is uh, 20th Century British Glass by Charles Hadjimaj, and he has a whole advert for gay glass. Dun, dun, dun. And, yeah, there's, a, there's some bullseye in here. We've got a couple of pieces here. Um, the piece over here, yeah, and a lot of these shapes were made with bullseye. Um, I think that's it for this page, but you've got different colors. Um, so evergreen, sunshine, spring. The spring is really like a uranium green, sunshine is uranium yellow, and evergreen is a really dark. So the colors are not really reflected by what you're seeing here. Um, and it does tell you that this started in 1933. Obviously, this is with these vases and bowls and everything, not with the tableware. The tableware was probably earlier. And, um, yeah, it's kind of associated, I would say, um, but not exactly the same. But um, with that, we'll move on a bit more. So the book I'm looking at here is British Glass Between the Wars by Roger Dodsworth. Um, yep, he has this. It says it's a liqueur glass, so, yeah, it's a small one. And um, he's saying this is sunshine amber. Um, I think it's called yellow in the other book, in the advert. But anyway, and he's saying this is from the late 30s. And his is, yeah, because his is marked Web Made in England, which is a late, late 30s mark. But I have some with some different marks. So, um, yeah, with that, um, we will move on and I will show you some glass. So, the channel's called Love Decanters, so I'm going to start with the decanters. Um, these two, on the left, are marked uh, Web England, which makes them 1950 to 66. And this one is, where is marked Web Made in England, which makes it 1935 to 1950. Um, yeah, there's some other little oddities. This one... The capacity of this one is about 50% more than the other two. You can see it's like a really puffed out shape at the top. Can you see how big it is? Just overall it's bigger. Um, you can see where it says Web England on the bottom. Yep. I'm thinking this is unusual. I've never seen one this size. I am going to get it cleaned up. It's got a bit of... Um, Blue minute. There's two of them. I'm, I'm actually thinking I'm going to take these um, next time I go to Loveridge's. Um, this is the other one, which is marked as well. I'll show you. And you can see it says made in England with web in the middle. Yep, yeah, and yeah, this has got some blue in a ring around it. But um, yeah. In a way, this is the most common colour, but this is a 50 cent bigger one, which is really unusual. I've never seen another one this big. Uh, this is the next most common. Um, so, you know, in fact, out of these three, this is the most common because the only yellow one that I've seen, or sunshine yellow, I should say, is this one. So, um, yeah, I saw this in Antique Centre and I was like, <gasps> yes. And um, the other thing about it is, I think I need to... Um, Put the lights off and show you a little something. So I've got my UV light on. You've got this one, which is showing you it's lead crystal for that colour, that kind of slightly purpley bluey colour. This one is not showing you very much. And then this one, yeah. Um, this one is um, uranium glass. That's that for a bit of colour. So yeah, um, sunshine yellow and the... I can't remember what the spring green are both uranium in web. So now I'm showing you the glasses I have. Um, you can see there's a range of sizes. So you can see this is quite a big goblet. And then, um, yeah, right down to little liqueur glass or little sherry. This looks like a cocktail. These look like maybe, maybe that's a water goblet, that's a wine glass. 
that's a port or something, I don't know. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, this one and this one are marked Web England. So, um, yeah, so what that means is that um, this one and this one are definitely made post-1950, 1950 to 66. And then this one is marked uh, Web Made in England, um, which makes it uh, pre-1950, 1935 to 1950. Um, let me show you the mark underneath. Will it focus on the glass? There you go. It's upside down. Um, there's no pontal marks on any of these glasses, by the way. And also, the depth of... I could have brought another glass from the shed, but anyway, the depth of the the actual blob is a diff very some of them are very distinct this one is the least distinct ones and it's not due, due to the size because I have a few of these glasses and some of them are very indistinct and some of them are very blobby it's just part of the process um, so the size isn't making them smaller necessarily it's, it's just I think how hard they're pressed into the mold at the beginning when they um, before they blow the rest of the glass and um, yeah, so those are the glasses I have. Um, I've seen these in other colours. The yellow ones and the dark green ones are pretty rare. Brown and clear are the most common ones. Um, and I have seen them very rarely with a stem on. Um, but that's incredibly rare. The last piece I have to show you is this um, Art Deco looking jug. Um, yeah, it's quite a big jug as you can see, and um, underneath it's marked. Where is it marked? Oh yeah, I forgot. This is unusual. It's marked here at the heel of the um, handle. Can you see there? It says "Made Web England," which makes it 1950. To 66 so even though I think this design is from the 30s originally which hence the very Art Deco look to it um, there are other jugs in this shape I've seen um, so yeah um, this is the last piece I have I have some photos of some gay series glass I have a, a vase and a bowl that I no longer have uh, I sold the bowl and I think I gave the the vase away so I will show you the pictures of those now so I hope you enjoyed that um, and before I start winding this up I found another channel that started up very recently by it's called Philip Morford and I presume the chap is Philip Morford that's doing it and um, yeah, he's doing something very similar to me. He's based in the US. He's he's just new to this because um, he's only got a few videos out. But yeah, this is how do I say? Yeah, it's very time consuming doing this. Obviously, I'm doing it for fun. It's my hobby. Um, but I would like it to expand. I would like um, you know I, I'm here trying to promote antique glass. And um, yeah, if you like and subscribe to me, um, it means that. YouTube's more likely to promote my videos to other people, grow the grow the, the user base. So also, this other chap that started, he needs the same. He's in the US. Um, I don't think any, I've not seen anybody else doing what I'm doing, and he's just started. So yeah, check him out, Philip Morford. I will give you a link to his channel below. Um, so yeah, like and subscribe to him too. And also, I will give you all the reference books that I in the description. And um, yeah, please remember to like and subscribe as usual. And um, thank you very much for watching and good night. Thank you. Bye.